All right, we got uh, in the studio tonight Bob Whitney. Bob is a famous program director from the rock and roll days. And uh, if you were listening earlier tonight, we had the great Dan Ingram on the air with us, and Bob was his first program director. Isn't that right, Bob? I, there probably were program directors before, I think, because he worked in New Haven before he came to Dallas. Yeah. And, uh, but I don't really know much about what happened to him before. No? After I know what happened to him, he became, you know, rather well-known, fantastic talent, a lot of people grew up with him. Yeah. And a wonderful guy. I think he was drop shipped here by FedEx. <laughs> Probably. Where's he from originally? He's from uh, Queens, I think. Really? New York area, anyway. So he is a New York guy. Oh yes, absolutely. I didn't know that. I could could not tell. And when he got to Dallas and to St. Louis, he wanted to get back to New York. Uh -huh. And he came to Stamford, Connecticut, which was pretty nearby, to Mars Broadcasting, where we made a lot of production stuff. Now, what's Mars Broadcasting? Mars Broadcasting was a syndicator of contests and jingles and, you know, uh, you should know because we sent them up to KBW, didn't you guys play I was, them? I played them in every city I, I, I worked in. Did you really? We had all these contests. They had them in Miami, too. Really? Now, now Bob Whitney had the production company called Mars Productions and Danny Room was with you. That's right. And you didn't have Bob Todd with you, though. No, no. no. That happened much later. Now, where are you from originally? I'm from Boston. All right. How about you, Bob? Where are you from? Battle Creek. Battle Creek, Michigan. Yeah. Now, how did you guys meet up? Uh, well, we've talked about that lately. Yeah, this is a heck of a story. <laughs> Go and tell them your story. Well, 1969, I was at Quixie for three years. That's in Atlanta. Yeah. Radio station in Atlanta. And then and intermittently, I was at CK. In fact, I was at CKLW when you were at Quixie. In Detroit. And, yeah, well, actually, we got to Windsor. tell these people, right? All right. And I was at Wibbage. WIBG is in Philadelphia. In 68. you got to ha have a road map for the show, right. you know, a libretto. So he was a 50s disc jockey, and I was a 60s disc jockey. All right. And um, Kent Burkhardt, who you know. He's from Atlanta. He's the yeah. first consultant in the business, right. the first guy to come along and tell other people how to live. Exactly. We didn't have them before. Well, he sent me to Whitney. All right. And said, uh, and, and uh, I was looking for a job. You know how that is. Yes. And uh, so I ended up in Whitney's garage in Philadelphia, and Whitney had to get me out of his garage, so he sent me to Louisville, Kentucky, to All program right. a radio station. There. Which was? Wacky. I All thought right. that was an appropriate place for him to go. <laughs> it's, it's probably more wacky than anybody ever thought. And he was with Westinghouse at the time, general manager of KYW in Philadelphia. Right. Well, but they used to really, be in Cleveland. <laughs> they used to be in Cleveland. Yeah. But then... I refused to go there till they moved He was only it. there for a short while. Yeah. And, uh, and he was getting ready to go to work for Lynn Broadcasting, that owned Wacky, as national program director. Yeah. So sent me as program director to Wacky. And then over the next year, he and I worked on the first music television together, which was in 1970 out of Atlanta, which sort of hooked us up again, because you don't know about the now explosion. No, I'm getting confused. This is like I went from Wixy to Waxy to Kaka. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot Kaka. Yeah, all yeah. these call letters, K-A-K-A, -A, it's a great station. But anyway, we were we were in Atlanta together in 1970 doing the Now Explosion, which was a syndicated television program, music television. Right. And, um, and hadn't seen each other for 30 years, and the Atlanta Constitution ran an article on us in August on the Now Explosion. I thought... This is 30 years after the Now Explosion. This is 30 right. years. This is last August. So it's like Woodstock. Yeah. So exactly. he, he was, I thought he was dead. But he wasn't. Well, that's flattering. And somebody had read the article and uh, and contacted Bob and said, gee, did you know there's an article about the Now Explosion? Skinny Bobby Harper, did you know him? Sure. He was in Pittsburgh. Yes. And he was in, he was at, he was in Buffalo at Whistle, I think. And then he was also at WSAI in Cincinnati and at Wacky and at Quixie. And We're back on all those stations all those again. Stations. All right, so anyway, what happened? So anyway, we hooked up again <laughs> together and, and decided to do a website and and recall all the great disc jockeys of all time. Why? Why would anybody want to do that? That's a good question. That is an excellent question. Yeah, we Thank don't you. know the answer. Uh, we've thought a lot about it and argued about it and stuff, but what actually happened was, to me, I got out of radio in 1974 after programming KYA in San Francisco yeah. and went in the, the computer business and didn't think about radio and didn't talk to anybody who I had previously known. 
And uh, then I retired, and the reason was that I was 70 years old, and the next oldest person in the computer company was, of course, 24. Yeah. <laughs> and they felt it was appropriate for me to move on, so I did, and then I got to thinking about how wonderful radio had been way back when, and I went looking for an old friend, Roger Barkley, in Los Angeles. Okay. And so I went to the Los Angeles Times uh, website and read his obituary. He died four days before. Oh. That was kind of a shocking thing. He was a good friend. I still thought of him as a young guy. I still think of everybody as well, young Well, those guys. people from L.A., Loman and Barkley. Yes. That's the name of the uh, of the team that was on the radio Very for years. Very famous. On KABC and also KFI years later. Right. Yeah. Very famous. And they even went to Palm Springs. I, I think that's where Loman is right now. As a matter yeah. Right. Yeah. So, and Loman and Barkley had both been at K-Box in Dallas, so I knew them both real well. And Al Loman Jr., he was known as here yes. in New York. Right. Yeah. Well, anyway, those are the names, and we discovered, Bob and I, when we got together, that an awful lot of disc jockeys had changed their lives significantly, and each of these was a very interesting story. Some of them weren't with us anymore, of course. Right. And we, we climbed into a motorhome, and we started to motor around Florida, and of course we found Jack Gale from Boston, we found Herb Oscar Anderson from New York. Yeah, in Florida you find all the old bones. That's right. Sure. And as we went up the elevator, yeah. When we finally found Herb's building overlooking the ocean, there he was at the top singing to us, Hello, Hello again. Hello again. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. Is he retired? Uh, I would say he's retired, although right. he still does stuff. You know, he runs around and sings a lot. And yep. there are a couple little stations down in Florida that he drops in on and stuff like that. But I would say he's retired. Yeah. He looks great and he's having fun. Yeah. And then the people that we went to talk to after that, because you have such a wide-ranging audience here, probably a lot of people know these folks. Yeah, well, I mean, we figured, I mean, in those days, yeah. basically the same time he went into the computer business, I got out of radio and I went into advertising and television, advertising and marketing. Aren't they one and the same? Basically. Yeah. I mean, television's only here because but of But, you know, radio is like a magic thing. You're, yeah. When you're young, you we, we got into it for a lot of different reasons. And most of us, basically the same reasons. Girls. Partly. Drugs. But partly. Money. Mm, mostly. Free music. Absolutely. And well, the fun and everything else of it. Well, that's yeah. the first 20%. And besides, it's not a job. It oh, was, yes, it is. It was fun. <laughs> Well, you've been in it long enough now. I, it is a job. <laughs> I never, I never <laughs> thought of this as being a, a hobby. <laughs> that always but irks me. It's a love me. affair. It is a love uh, it's affair. a mistress. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, I, I have a different slant. Are you interviewing me? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, yours, yours is the love affair part. You make it. You're romanticizing it, and I'm not trying to dramatize it. But it is. It is definitely a mistress. This well, is we the, came to New York to interview you yes, and to did. interview Dan Ingram. Yeah. Well, and, you, you got Dan. And got Dan. we have actually And we now, got you and Dan. Yes. Which if, is even better. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, give it another, oh, five or six minutes and we can call this an interview. We could. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and we're televising it, too, right absolutely. here in the studio. We can actually call this an interview. Yeah. So the idea You guys haven't Dan, asked me thing one. <laughs> <laughs> I guess... Uh, well, I don't interview anyway, as a rule. Have you noticed that? You converse. Yes. Is that what I do? I yeah, think I think, so. I, I think it's I... conversation. Yeah? It's chat. It's chat. It is chat. Yeah. Chat. And you don't have to type. That's what I like about it. Right. What does that mean? And you it's mean warm internet? <laughs> and, and besides, it's warm personal chat. You just yeah. don't. You just don't talk to people about the surface stuff. You get into people. And we talk to people who really don't count as a rule. Well, of all types. Yeah, because everybody counts. Everybody's interesting yeah. for five minutes, as they yeah. see in television. Well, fifteen. Andy well, says. And maybe <laughs> preachers for two. I wanted to have my fifteen minutes with Andy Warhol. Did you? Yeah. Did you get it? No, never got that. Yeah. I, I'm stuck now. Are there any other greats that you wanted to interview that have passed away that perhaps you haven't had the chance? Uh, there's only one person I want to talk to we haven't interviewed, and it's only for personal reasons. Uh, it's Rosie Greer. I want to ask him about O.J. Simpson. <laughs> I see. Because he's, he's the one who knows. Uh -huh. I just want to hear it from some other human being. Right. <laughs> and uh, I, I believe he's the guy that knows. I think he's his friend, and he really knows. Yeah. Not that he would ever say, right. but I would ask. Yeah. And uh, not that he would answer. Not that he would lie. Right. But he might omit. Right. He refused to. Answer. Can we take a break here? Sure. All right. Sure. We'll play some commercials. Let's take a break here. All right. Bob Whitney and Bob Todd be right back on the Joey Reynolds show. They're interviewing me. I'm their guest. A lot of things are moving over to the internet. 
I a lot of things. I can hardly wait until uh, we get this uh, two-way television stuff. I'm and we like don't that. know where it's going to go, do no. we? Well, we got a good idea. I won't quit until I'm a hologram. <laughs> and I want to decompose instead of using Continental Airlines. So that you I can look a little like a hologram. Thank you. Yeah, I think a, it'll a well, be good. A well-preserved hologram. <laughs> well, Les Paul was here earlier on the phone, you know. I, I heard that. Wish That's he, amazing. He, he can call back if he wants to. The world is waiting for the sunrise. Yeah. And it, it and believe me, it comes a lot earlier this month. <laughs> it does. Yeah. Especially yes, when you do an all-night show. And thank God I sleep in that coffin. <laughs> oh, hi to moon. <clears throat> yeah. I know. What were you wanting to talk about now, well, Rob? Roby Young. Roby Young was a disc jockey yeah, we, in New York City. Right. I do a I do a radio talk show every Sunday morning in Gainesville. In Gainesville, Florida, right. And when Bob and I hooked up, he went on the air with me. And we had the television cameras there, much like we are, have them here right now. And during the course of the show, we played excerpts of some of these great jocks. Right. Herb Oscar and some of the clips from Jack Gale and uh, from Gary Owens and various people. And lo and behold, we, when we were talking to Herb Oscar, we got mentioned Roby Young. The phone rang, and it's Nancy Young, Roby's mother, mm -hmm. who uh, was wonderful on the phone. I mean, just, she turns out she lives at about a quarter of a mile from my house. Well, he died uh, young. Tragically. With the name Young, he was young, actually. Right. Four yeah. years ago, about four years ago. What did he die from? Was it alcohol? Yeah. 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 And he had... Um, uh, I think it was a heart attack, really, that did it. But I'm not sure. We're, we're going to interview her when we go back to Florida. Yeah. And, uh, and do a segment on her. Well, he was one of those guys that said, Paul is dead. Yes. He did that rumor. Actually, my friend Lou Yeager started that rumor is at that Hofstra. Right? Yeah. Of course, I've heard that a lot because a lot of stations spread the rumor. Oh, a is that right? A lot of stations picked up on the rumor. So it started with somebody in radio, huh? Well, we, we did it at Wacky, and I read an article from the Michigan State News, so I don't know where it really started. It spread like wildfire. It's supposed to be Roby Young. It's Roby Young was certainly the famous one that yeah. got fired over it. And we have a tape of uh, Roby's last Day on few minutes mm -hmm. on WABC, and uh, that's on our website, as a matter of yeah. fact. I mean, the website, it's... People can go to it now. I guess we ought, might as well plug it, right? Sure. It's www.ourradioshow.net. And there are a bunch of audio clips that can be listened to with real player. And eventually all that stuff will be streaming video. And the reason is we thought, well, there are a lot of radio sites out there. There are a lot of old air check sites where you can go listen, listen to the jocks from the 60s. But there's nothing like what's happened to them. Where are they now? Uh, we discovered that a lot of them are gone. Yeah. And uh, and how they changed. And how they changed. And so what do they think of what's happened to the business yeah, of radio? Those that are still here, what are they doing? So we're tracking down the greatest disc jockeys of all time, but Bob including Whitney, Joey Reynolds. But Bob Whitney here already knows what happened, and you know it better than anybody. It's not really true, because no. I was gone from the business. I yeah. didn't, For I, 25 years. Well, should I cut this thing short? I'll tell you what happened. All right. The, the Beatles got bigger than the jocks. Right. The that was the end of it. The music got bigger than the jocks. Yeah, you know, when the, when, the, when, the, when the personalities in the music is bigger than the personality introducing the music, then the gravitation is towards the well, music. The music. Right. And uh, it's the same thing with television right now. There's a, a bunch of superstars who, who are uh, uh, themes, not people. Yeah. <laughs> the formula for The Tonight Show is Jay Leno is not you're not watching Jay Leno, you're watching the formula right. for The Tonight Show. He happens it's to be a the format. host. He does the commercials, and right. uh, I mean the uh, uh, comedy at the beginning, which he does very well, and then the rest of it is, uh, who cares? He's like a news reader, but he's a comedy reader. Yeah, and, and we're not watching I Miss on MSNBC because you want to see him do a wonderful television show. You're, you're a voyeur, you're watching him uh, while, between takes because we want to peek. So what we're more curious than as a as a nation now, and more we're nosier, we're more gossipy, we're more celebrity driven, we're uh, we're uh, more self centered, we're a lot of things different than we were in those more innocent years when we were family and we were to exchange cultures and ideas easily. I would talk to you, you would talk to me, then we would tell someone else what we said. Uh, remember that old experiment they used to do back in the early days? They take ten people and put them in a row, and they whisper something in one's ear, and by the time it got to the last person, the story changed entirely. 
They used to be able to do that experiment. You could never do that now. If you take 10 people and put them in a row because of demographics, they wouldn't even know what the hell you're talking about. They wouldn't be interested in the story long enough to make 10 people. And uh, no one, would, by the end of the 10, would know anything at all about what you're talking about. It's a completely different society we live right. in now, fragmented. And uh, we've been sliced and diced so many times, I think that uh, we belong on the boardwalk in Atlantic City with uh, Ed McMahon doing that commercial he used to do when he did the, uh, that Vegematic, remember? Right. That's that, that, I mean, we're, we're in a Vegematic society. Everybody's sliced and diced. Well, most everybody has told us that they're uh, rather unhappy with the consolidation of radio and, you know, a single outfit owning tons and tons of radio stations. Why are they saying that? Because they're not the five. Well, no, they're that. afraid. Yeah. They're afraid that if they uh, do something that the management doesn't like, that they're, instead of being one station they can't work at, there will be a thousand. And I and almost, well, I would say about 80% of the people on the air have mentioned that. But what I wonder is, uh, if, if being on the radio and being entertaining and unusual and so forth is what counts, why not go do it? Well, why don't you ask me that question? Oh, I will, right after the break. <laughs> right. right after these messages. Yeah, we, we, we do have some messages. And uh, believe me, these people are paying a lot of money for this time. But if I were on at an earlier hour, <laughs> 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 we'd be gouging the hell out of you. <laughs> we'll be right back on the Joey Reynolds Show with the half the price, the half price sale. <laughs>